this is the November 14th, 2023 meeting of the um, Southboro Youth Commission. Uh, it is 7.04 p.m. So we will review the minutes of the October 10th, 2023 last meeting, which was an in-person meeting. Did anyone have any edits, comments on the meeting minutes? Okay, um, I'll take a roll call vote for that. Uh, for our, excuse me, may I have a motion on the minutes? <clears throat> uh, I make a motion to approve the minutes from the October 10th, uh, 2023 uh, Youth Commission Board meeting. Is there a second? I'll second that. All right, Laura, um, roll call vote, aye or nay, I guess. Laura? Oh, yeah. Okay. Aye. Um, uh, Susan? Aye. Karen Ingram? Aye. Sarah Micas? Aye. Lauren Ritchie? Aye. Um, next is the director's report. Um, so, Sarah Castle? Okay. Let's see, uh, Winter Wishes has been very busy this month. Um, we've had a lot of uh, great conversations with friends of the Southboro Youth Commission who is managing the donation side of things. So the deadline for family applications was at the end of October. We do have some applications that are still trickling in. Um, some of them are referrals from the Southboro Food Pantry or the schools. Um, and so right now we are uh, really in the midst of uh, connecting with friends on a regular basis to find out what kinds of donations are coming in. Um, and then towards the end of this month, we're gonna be working together with them on um, moving forward with purchasing the needed gift cards. Um, as with every year, we've had several new intakes for counseling services at the beginning of the school year. Um, Shannon has been very busy with the Encompass Coalition um, since we had approval for the Drug-Free Communities Grant, uh, the first order of business and a really very important order of business is hiring a coalition coordinator. So she has now sat in on, I think it might be six uh, interviews at this point. Um, they've had a few promising candidates and um, the one that they met with as recently as yesterday is um, someone that they're very excited uh, about. And uh, with all of the candidates, they've been, all of the candidates of interest, they've been having them move forward with um, some extra steps to sort of better, better inform them about uh, this person's work ethic and organization style, et cetera. Um, so hopefully there will be uh, a, a candidate hired in the near future. Um, we've also been working on developing the website. Um, we have a a coalition member who's very well versed in developing websites through Squarespace. So she's volunteering her time to build that out for us. Um, we received a, a grant from the Southboro Community Fund. Shout out to that group who's been year after year after year been very supportive of, of the department and, and of friends uh, for that matter with uh, funding requests. So we received some funding for two speakers um, that we plan to bring in over the winter time. Um, one of them will be in January, the other one in March. And not through this grant, but we are working on um, securing one more speaker for Mental Health Awareness Month. So hopefully we'll have some more details for you on that in the near future. Um, Related to that, uh, we've been doing a lot of planning for upcoming events. Uh, this Friday, we have, uh, I think there's a few of you maybe in this meeting who are planning to attend, but this Friday we have 
uh, a mindful art event. This is a redo of something we tried to put out um, last fall, perhaps fall of 2022. Um, and it didn't pan out, um, but we're really excited with the amount of interest. It's a, a night of fun friends and self-care. And it's sort of modeled after a paint night, but with a mindfulness twist. Um, and we're bringing back Kim Welch, who's a um, art therapist who I really love working with. Um, and she's gonna lead us through that. Um, we're, we're doing a lot of planning for Mental Health Awareness Month and also for National Day of Unplugging. Um, so we're excited to have more details on those things to share with you in the near future. Um, we had an all YFS retreat on, we had nine different youth and family service departments come out. We all got together, all of the directors planned it and brought all of our staff. Um, it was a really nice turnout. We all had lunch together. We networked, we shared resources. Um, so that was really great. We had trunk or treat happen and I'm very, I can't see myself right now. Hopefully you can see I'm holding up a copy of the community advocate. We made the front page for our, our costume, which was really fun. Um, so that was a nice outreach event that we did. Um, and we pre-stuffed bags for every, I think there were like 400 children that came through that line. It was a lot of people. Um, but we pre-stuffed every bag with some information about our department along with some of the things for kids. So um, it was a very effective way of getting information in the hands of families. Um, and we have been very busy making updates to our reception room um, after getting approval to use some of the ARPA funds um, that went unspent. Um, so Christina is the proud new owner of a beautiful reception desk. She finally has space to move around. She finally has a computer monitor, not just one, but she actually has two because her desk space is so uh, big now. It's I'm just thrilled for her. And every time I look at her behind that desk, I think, how professional she looks and how much more comfortable she looks. So we're very grateful for the opportunity to do that. Um, we also have moved forward with purchasing new reception room chairs, which we assembled just yesterday, actually. Um, and we have a few, few more pieces that we plan to bring into the room um, just to give it a fresh update and provide more comfortable seating um, for folks coming in. But uh, if you have a chance to come by and check it out and visit us, we'd love to have you because it's it really looks nice. Um, and I didn't mention one of the things on here. I'm kind of reading through everything, but it's all exciting stuff. Um, we are working, Megan, Shannon, and I have been convening um, to talk about how we can deliver Shannon's workshops in different ways. We just have so many people who want the workshops who who don't sign up for when they're being offered because the the scheduling doesn't work. As you all know, we're we're definitely feeling tired of um, offering workshops and having to cancel them because of low enrollment. And so we're working on sort of a coaching model where um, Shannon will deliver workshops one-to-one -one or in a small group, you know, so if we had a family who was interested in learning about QPR, husband and wife, for example, or um, a mother-daughter combo who needed to um, go through listen with love together, we would work with them on scheduling that during a time that would work well for them. Obviously, we can't cast as wide a net this way, but it's something that we want to give a try because we have the same people reaching out to us um, to say, I'd really like to take that, but it's not working for me. So, um, and then we have a, a few things coming up after this. We are sort of on the brink of, of a lot of holidays coming up. So things are a little, um, they're not slower, but they're, a few disruptions to our schedules coming up, I guess is what I should say. So, um, 
but uh, we are we are still busy. We have some meetings, important meetings coming up. Um, and we are uh, we have been asked Megan and I to attend a training that's being offered to students at Algonquin called Signs of Suicide. Not quite QPR, but sort of um, raising awareness for students of what to look for. And because that training is potentially triggering to some students, uh, they have requested that we come in and help sort of provide reinforcement for students. Um, and that's gonna be happening after Thanksgiving in the first week of December. So as of now, we are planning to go be part of the team of professionals to help sort of um, be available to any students who might need to talk to somebody after doing that training. So those are my updates for now. <laughs> I could have just let you read it, but I just wanted to, I was just excited to share all of it. So I don't know if there's any questions on any of that. Nope. Okay. Um, the FY25 budget. Sure. I'm still unmuted, right? You yeah. are unmuted. Great. Okay. So what I provided for you in the packet is the uh, the request for FY25 as of now, um, along with the breakdown of, sorry, my cat has a lot to say right now. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear her. Um, uh, along with salary information for FY25, we did learn from the personnel board that uh, employees are going to be getting a 4.5% pay increase this upcoming year, which is great. Um, and really along with that is a memo that sort of outlines all of what's included in the grid. Um, so as you can see, just like I, I mentioned their salaries includes a 4.5% pay increase for all employees, longevity pay for three eligible employees. And then one thing that's new, um, but that I was sort of encouraged to explore, um, with the select board was an hourly rate for a 600 hour graduate level internship. Um, so that is also included there, which is why there is a more significant jump in salaries. Um, software includes our yearly subscription to Simple Practice, which is our HIPAA compliant electronic health record system for counseling services a yearly subscription for my senior center. And I did hear from them recently that they are coming out with an updated version in 2024. So we're excited about that. And then a very, very modest budget for Propio, um, which is the language interpretation and translation services. Um, I'd like to see that number increase over time, not because we need more, but because it means that we're doing a better job of connecting with families where English is not their first language. Um, so as we continue to work on our uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion um, goals, I, I hope to see the need for that increase. But that is a, uh, a number I feel comfortable with at this point. Um, employee training, there's no change. Uh, it's still 1500 Printing costs uh, has um, asking for an additional 1500 And this is where, you know, we've had a lot of conversation about marketing and outreach materials, things that have our logo on it or information about our services. Um, so that's what's included here. Um, some of the things we purchased this year. Um, it's been clear to us that that would be very helpful in reaching people on a regular basis. Um, so that's where that comes in. Um, the, the line 
in our budget that has the biggest jump, um, but is the most likely to be amended over time is contracted services. Um, so we have our usual amount for our clinical consultation and clinical supervision services with Rona Karens. Um, but what's added this year is a $25,000 annual contract with Interface Referral Service. Um, I've been having conversation with our uh, school superintendent, as well as members of the Southboro School Committee about the prospect of the cost of interface being shared between our department and the school department. And so um, I'm gonna put it, the total cost in our budget for now, um, the school department is still in preliminary stages of developing their budget. There's a lot more moving parts. So, um, so it's gonna live here for now, but it's, um, Hopefully it will change um, and that there will, it will be a shared expense. Um, office supplies, there's no change from last year. Program supplies, um, we increased that by $500 because we really tried to sit down and break out which programs are we offering on a regular basis. And that includes Mental Health Awareness Month, something during Pride Month, um, the outreach that we tend to do in the fall where we're um, going to trunk or treat, for example. So these are things that don't have anything to do with the department, but um, enable us to continue doing our, our job um, and, and engaging in these programs. Um, so that's where that line, uh, what that line covers and the mileage, there is no change there. Um, so this is not, really any different from the last conversation we had with the exception to salaries. Um, I think the last time I presented this to you all, we did not know the percentage pay increase for SAP employees. Um, we do know that information now. Otherwise, everything else here is what we discussed last time. Um, so I don't know if there are any questions. This is what you have in the packet is going to be uh, with your blessing to move forward will be what I actually submit to our town's account um, finance team is the first stage of the budget submission. So do we need a vote on that if it's with our blessing? Yeah, I think that would be helpful. I think you I think you probably voted on it last time, but because we have just a slight additional information with the <laughs> um, pay increase that the numbers that you have in front of you are more accurate than what was in the last packet. I don't have any questions on it. Does anyone have anything? All right, can I have a motion, please? I move to approve the proposed budget for the fiscal year 24. 25, right? 25. A second. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Uh, Laura? Aye. Sarah Micas? Aye. Karen? Aye. Susan? I saw your mouth move. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Lauren Ritchie, I. All right. Um, we have uh, outreach opportunities com coming up at the Gobble Wobble. Um, pick up the the day before, um, before Gobble Wobble. Right? Is that correct? Yes, um, Christina is involved in helping support the race um, and working with friends of recreation. And as a result, she's going to be at the penny pickup um, in the gym at Trottier the day before. Um, 
and in years past, we have put out information um, for people to grab. Um, there's a lot of giveaways, is my <clears throat> understanding. I have never actually been able to attend this, but have helped set it up in the past beforehand. Um, so this year, we'll actually have somebody who can kind of keep an eye on things and, and um, offer a hello along with some information, which I think is nice. Um, we do have two tables that are going to be set up. One is for the department and the other one is for Encompass, our coalition. Um, the folks that we have available at Encompass are actually going to be over in Northboro manning a table for their iteration of the gobble wobble, which is the turkey trot. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of, uh, what's, what's that figure of speech or, I don't know, I don't remember. Um, Anyway, alliteration, maybe that's what I was thinking of. Um, so so we have folks that are in Northboro helping with that and Christina in Southboro helping to sort of provide some information about both Encompass and um, Southboro Youth and Family Services. So if anybody happens to have availability for an hour or more and would like to go over and help Christina, that would be tremendous. Um, we're gonna help with setting up, but we don't have the capacity uh, to be able to be there with uh, her during that time. So, sure. so just, will, she, will she send a sign up genius or should we just reach out to Christina? Um, I can ask her to do that. Okay. I don't, she sometimes signs up time slots or whatever, but if not- Yeah, I yeah, can. yeah, okay. yep. I know it goes to like seven or eight at night. The bit yes, and I'm not even I'm not even sure if she's going to be there that entire time. I think her kids are eventually going to join her. She's going to put them to work. <laughs> so, um, we should give them the elevator pitch too. <laughs> um, all right. So I'll ask her to reach out to everybody, and if you happen to have even a small amount of time available. Um, I guess there's a lot of people in and out of there. Does anybody run the race and are familiar yeah. with? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. There's so. a lot of people picking up bibs and yeah, mm -hmm. there's, there's usually pie giveaways, little yes. pies. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. They have yeah. a lot of um, yeah. t-shirts for the runner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's it for that. Did we have any other outreach opportunities that anyone knows of or would be coming up? Yeah, we're getting into the time of year where it gets harder and harder to get out there, but it's a goal of ours to try to do at least one outreach event or opportunity, even if it's a passive opportunity, like um, just giving out information somewhere um, where it's not even a person, you know, volunteering hours. Um, well, Isn't we'll there do... a kids shopping thing or the Boy Scout shopping? I saw in at the intersection there <laughs> mm -hmm. near St. Mark's, they had something up about uh, shopping day, which, you know, it, I think the kids shop, I don't know, do the parents yeah. shop? The kids. I think it's for the kids to shop for their yeah. parents or yeah, whomever. Yeah. yeah, and then winter wishes. I know we're going to be doing like a lot of the um, Santa Day and stuff. We're going to have flyers out for winter wishes. Um, there's also that. We'll talk about it. The Chelsea, the artisan thing. We called it the mini shoot, but I guess they're calling it the artisan sale or whatever on the 26th. But I'm not sure if. We wanted to include any other information we're going to be having our winter wishes flyers available but nothing really youth and family services but that's november 26th correct 10 10 to 4 at the community house on sunday the 26th okay any other but, outreach? Sarah, were you about to say something? No, I, I saw the screen go green somewhere. <laughs> um, South Union building update then? 
Yes. Um, so I haven't really chatted too much about it because everything is so kind of up in the air. But if you've been following any of the conversation um, about our building, I know it's been sort of been talked about for a while. Um, and there's been some more recent development. Um, the select board has been taking a closer look at our building and what some options are. I'm not even going to pretend to summarize that all efficiently because there's been so much conversation and so many different prospects. Um, but the most recent, where we, we've landed as of right now, um, and I think I, you know, I'm comfortable sharing this because it's now been talked about with the select board that, um, there is a potential for our department to eventually move to the flag school. Um, some of you might scratch your heads and say, I thought I knew all of the schools in Southboro and I've never heard of the flag school uh, because that's what I did. I said, are you kidding me? There's another school in Southboro, don't we have enough? Um, but the flag school is actually uh, where the current um, historical museum is, which is behind Pilgrim Church and sort of behind Town Hall. Um, so right now it's serving as a, a Southboro Museum. It's very cool inside. I had an opportunity to go check it out. Um, but they are eventually going to be moving. Um, the timeline on that is uh, unknown at this point, but um, what's really interesting is that where we used to be, Fayville Hall over on Central Street, that was the building that we used to be in before we are now, was purchased by the Historical Society and is being updated. And so the museum is going to be moving into the building that we used to be in. <laughs> um, so, so things are sort of contingent on all of that, um, but that is a town owned building um, and they are looking at putting us in that uh, building. It's still, you know, um, up in the air at this point, but I wanted to share that prospect with you all um, since it's been part of the conversation. Um, I've had a chance to go over there and look at it since it's being proposed. I wanted to know if for sure it would be a good a good prospect for us. Um, and uh, if if that's what ends up happening, I'm happy to share that uh, both myself and Megan um, have taken a look at the space and feel like it would be a good fit for us. Um, it's both private because we would be the only department in the building. But what I really love is that it's still very centrally located. Um, we're right across the driveway from the food pantry, which is a an organization we work with uh, very closely. We're very close to the library, which is another uh, partner of ours. Um, we're right in the same parking lot with Town Hall. Um, the amount of space that we would have in there is very similar, if not better than what we have currently. And the flow is a lot nicer. Um, so obvious facilities would have to do some work to it to, um, make it work for uh, office space because it's a lot of open space right now. Um, but um, so this is, you know, at this stage, it's just a prospect that's on the table and I just wanted to share it with you. Um, with regard to South Union, uh, because we are still in the building um, and because things are still tentative with where we might end up in the future, the, the town, um, has most recently heard from St. Matthew's Church about the prospect of them acquiring the building. Um, so, so there's still still a lot of conversation about what will happen with the building, um, and um, you know what what the timeline on any of these things means. Uh, but I wanted to share with you at least the knowledge that I was what I was aware of. Does anybody have any questions on that? We're not going anywhere for right now. And even if even if a plan was put in place, it's probably going to be a couple of years before <laughs> anything actually moves forward. Thanks for the update. Sure. Uh, speaking of updates, friends update, Karen. Okay. Um... Okay, so we had a Celtics 
ticket fundraising, um, uh, little, we'll call it a raffle, but anyway, so someone donated, we had an anonymous donor that donated four very um, good tickets to a Celtics game. It was this past Saturday, I believe the 10th or the, the maybe the 9th or 10th, this past weekend. And we were able to raise $2,150 um, for raffling off those tickets. And so that was a pretty easy fundraiser. Um, and let's see, the next update is, okay, so the winter mini shoot event, that's what I was just talking about. It's a really now Chelsea's event. She's calling it an artisan sale. So it's 10 to four at the community house on Sunday. November 26th and um, friends will have a table there and we're going to have two baskets. We used to try to do a big table with get a bunch of vendors. And so it's just a little too much. We also have our event in May and we don't want to double dip and keep asking local businesses to donate. So we're just going to put together a, an adult basket with some wines and gift cards and spa stuff and hair salon stuff. And then a kids basket with some toys and other stuff. And then, um, so we'll be sitting at the event and raffling. People can buy tickets to win those baskets. And we'll be asked, we'll have uh, our flyers for Winter Wishes if anyone wants to donate to the Winter Wishes program as well. And what's the next one? Okay, so Winter Wishes campaign. Oh, Kathy provided some updated numbers, Kathy Cook. And she says, bear with me one email. Okay, current friends buckets as of today. Winter Wishes and Camper Ships has $9,761. Um, I don't know if you want any of the other updates, like as far as the emergency fund and all that other one. Uh, do you guys want those updated numbers? No? No, okay. Um, so our Winter Wishes um, fundraising is going well. Uh, and the next event, our big event, is going to be in May. We're changing it for Mother's Day. I think I already mentioned this. Mother's Day weekend, it's not going to be the day before Mother's Day. On Saturday, we're going to move it up a week, and it's going to be actually Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> but um, we are in the process of trying to see if we can get insurance to have a jump house or bounce house on the front of the community house lawn just to attract more Town more people to come, have it a bigger, um, wider audience. We're partnering with Kinder Group. And so, you know, we thought that it was fitting that they're going to have a lot of young families. So we wanted to provide some entertainment for the kids. We could get some middle schoolers to um, watch the kids while the parents are shopping. So um, I reached out to Dan Donahue, who's on the president of the board at uh, Community House, and he emailed back and he said that. Spoke with the insurance agent. He said the liability flows to the entity that rents the bounce house, not the place where it's set up. So it's really not community house insurance. It's if we're renting it out as friends. So I guess I'll have to talk to Kathy Cook and see if we can think that's an okay thing to do. So hopefully we'll be able to move forward with that. Um, I know, Sarah, we were talking about possible different locations to have you know, better parking or anything like that. So um, we have not nailed down that, but. Plenty of time to yes. keep thinking about. Yeah. But we just wanted to make it, because I feel bad. We have these vendors and it's a great event, but we just have such little audience. We didn't, maybe it's because it was Mother's Day, but I think a bigger draw would, you know, if we had stuff outside at the corner of, you know, the library in St. Mark's and if we had a bounce house and, you know, on a, Sunday where kids didn't have as much sports maybe um and hopefully it's a nice enough day so it'd be nice to get some more people in and then that is definitely an event that we could have a lot of you know outreach for um youth and family services too and I think that is all that's going on with friends right now okay that leads us to adjournment, if there's a motion for that. Can I just say, yes, 40 minutes is 
probably the <laughs> fastest youth commission I like, meeting. I just looked, I'm like, really? <laughs> We've heard a lot I, of things before. Quick, quick, we need to think of something else to say, but we can't do that because it's not on the agenda. <laughs> right. So. Right. But we've heard a lot of this before, so. Yes. Yep. All right. Um, is there a motion to adjourn? I make a motion to adjourn the 19th, 2023 uh, meeting of the Southboro Youth Commission Board um, at uh, 7.40 p.m. Is there a second? I'll second that. <laughs> All right. Um, Laura Chioko. Aye. Sarah Micas. Aye. Karen Anglum. Aye. Susan Beyer. Aye. Lauren Ritchie. Aye. All right. Wow. It was nice to see you for what feels like five minutes, but was really <laughs> 40. <laughs> Happy, Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving, guys. You too. Have fun. Take care. Bye. Bye.